item of business as time is tight today. Uh, the next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 15013 in the name of Willie Rennie on St Andrew's GP out of hours facility. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I can ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now and I call on Willie Rennie to open the debate. Mr Rennie please. Uh, thank you Deputy President Officer. I'm grateful to the members who've supported my motion today that has made this debate possible. I'm also grateful to the Health Secretary for the interest that she has taken in this particular issue. For those not so familiar, the proposal from the Fife Health and Social Care Partnership is to close the primary care emergency service, the GP out of hours service, based at St Andrews Community Hospital. This is part of a wider proposal that also affects Glenrothes, where Jenny Gulruth has been making a powerful case, and in Dunfermline too, where Shirley-Ann Somerville has been expressing concerns. The fury in St Andrews and East Fife has been extraordinary. It has inspired lots of people, unconnected with politics, to be active. Take Penelope Fraser from St Andrews. She's been collecting hundreds of names for my petition right across the area. Students from the university have produced a special video and carried out a protest outside the hospital in Kirkcaldy. Daryl Wilson from Anstruther has produced her own special objection postcard and over 2,000 people have sent one to the partnership board. A group of people led by Angela Anderson have submitted a participation request under the Community Empowerment Act. These are just some of the examples of people from the community stepping up because they are so appalled by the proposal. And the response has been overwhelming. The public meetings have been packed in Anstruther and St Andrews. In fact, they had to move one of the meetings to a bigger venue because so many had turned up. 2,300 of those postcards I talked about have been signed. The consultations, in fact, the majority of the consultations responses to the partnership were from people in North East Fife and over 6,500 people signed my petition against the closure. The case, I believe, for St Andrews is strong. It's a long way from Kirkcaldy, where the nearest centre would be, and some of the roads, the rural roads, are particularly poor. There are lots of elderly people and young students in East Fife who don't have their own transport. They have special health needs, including the students who come from all over the world. King's Cross Hospital in Dundee is often too busy to take people from North Fife. This was supposed to be a solution for the Tay Bridgehead area of Fife, but they as well will have to travel to Kirkcaldy too in many instances. The minor injury unit at St Andrews is run by the Primary Care Emergency Service. So if PCS goes in St Andrews, so does the minor injuries unit too. That would be a double blow for the community. The GPs locally are prepared to provide a service. In fact, the rota at St Andrews is booked all the way up until Christmas and has been for some time. The new service might be different from the one that we've been used to. It might utilise the skills of other health professionals, but a local service is possible and is required. The Lewis Ritchie report does highlight the need for a multidisciplinary approach and one that is person-centred. There is nothing in the Ritchie report that prevents the St Andrews facility remaining open. I would argue that it reinforces the case for St Andrews. There is a shortage of GPs. I would say it's a legacy of poor workforce planning. Of course there are more GPs, but more of them are part-time, so that there is effectively a cut in whole time equivalents of GPs. So that is creating this particular problem. There is an issue that needs to be addressed by the Fife Health and Social Care Partnership. People in East Fife understand that, but those problems will not be solved by the closure of St Andrews. I have mentioned before already that the rota at St Andrews is full until Christmas. There is no guarantee that those GPs who are currently providing the service in North East Fife would be prepared to make the long journey to Kirkcaldy to support the new service. 
So we'd end up with fewer GPs participating in the service as a whole if this change goes ahead. The newspapers report recently in the Courier of low uptake of GPs for the out-of-hours service was for Dunfermline, not for St Andrews. With the uptake in St Andrews as healthy, it would be extraordinarily perverse to penalise North East Fife for the shortages elsewhere in Fife. There have been flaws in the consultation process, including the impenetrable language, the three consultations bundled into one, and the rul ruling that the St Andrews option should be ruled out from the very, very beginning. But I have to say the officials at the Fife Health and Social Care Partnership have been responsive and sensitive throughout the process, despite these flaws. I thank them for that professionalism, even though I disagree with their recommendations. However, I have heard it said that people in North East Fife are just whinging and that they are wealthy so they can cope. Those people who hold those views are small in number, but they hold senior positions. My advice to them is to think very, very carefully. You have responsibilities for the whole of Fife, whether you like those parts or not. I was the Member of Parliament for Dunfermline and West Fife before I entered this Parliament. So I understand the special needs of that part of Fife and other parts of Fife. They should not be ignored. North East Fife has needs too, and neither should they be ignored either. The case for the facility in St Andrews is strong. We have the need with students and elderly people. It's a long distance to Kirkcaldy, and those roads are not in good condition. There is a clear demand, as demonstrated by the public meetings, but also the response through the petition. There is a demand in North East Fife, and GPs are prepared to step up to provide a service. So there is a demand, there is a need, and there is a, a capability of the GPs to provide that service. So there is a way to make this happen, and I would urge the Health Secretary to provide her support to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rennie. I call Jenny Gilruth, followed by Liz Smith. Ms. Gilruth, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I, I congratulate Willie Rennie on securing today's members' debate. This is not the first time this issue has been discussed during members' business. Uh, and whilst today's motion focuses on St Andrews, out of hours closures have affected Dunfermline and Glenrothes in my constituency, as Willie Rennie alluded to. For the last 20, 223 days now, our constituents have been travelling to the Victoria Hospital in Kirkcaldy one GP out of our service for the third largest local authority in the country. I spoke with my colleague Stephen Gethins, the MP for North East Fife, ahead of today's debate. He told me the out of our service must be retained at St Andrews Community Hospital. North East Fife is a large rural area with many minor roads and remote communities like the East Nuke. Many parts of North East Fife are a significant distance from Kirkcaldy. North East Fife has a diverse population, including a higher than average elderly population and a large number of students without transport. There are real concerns about having to travel a significant distance when you are unwell. I agree with Stephen Gethins. My concerns about the closure relate to the process as acknowledged in today's motion. The service fell over almost overnight. This is not usual practice and I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary would agree that it is not good practice. Fife's Health and Social Care Partnership then decided to consult retrospectively, three months after the closures had begun. And they added in community health and wellbeing hubs. And then they also added in community hospital and intermediate care bed redesign, all in the same consultation. Presiding officer, I know St Andrews very well and I know my constituency. Issues of rurality in the North East don't impact on the people I serve, but inequality does. Recommendation 7 of the Sir Lewis Ritchie Review states, quality and safety implementation and monitoring of out-of-hour services should be assessed for their impact on health inequalities. No equality impact assessment took place before the closures on the 9th of April. I asked repeatedly the Local Health and Social Care Partnership to share details of the EQIA. This did not materialise until, very quietly, in August, it was retrospectively electronically uploaded. Mm -hmm. I would encourage all members with an interest in this topic to interrogate the quality of the EQIA in its present form. Page 1, question 2. Who is the lead assessor and their contact details? Blank. Age and disability are rated as medium relevance. Race, sexual orientation and religion are rated as low. Ahead of today's debate, I wrote to the Director of Fife's Health and Social Care Partnership seeking clarity. Who did they speak to in these categories? How did they identify risk? When was this work completed? These questions have not been answered. 
The EQIA document currently online states that it was started on the 28th of March, 12 days before the service apparently fell over. But if the service had to shut on an emergency basis, how did the partnership have time to start an EQIA? The truth, of course, is that it was not conducted in March, nor was it conducted in April. As the director confirms to me in his letter, the EQIA was not approved until the 14th of September. It seems to me that Vice Health and Social Care Partnership started from a position and then worked towards it. In my view, the consultation has been flawed from the outset. Fundamentally, people did not understand what they were being asked about. Three different services were lumped together in a bid, I believe, to deliberately confuse the public. The use of jargon throughout the consultation documents is excessive. Majority phrases like why we need to change suggest this was never about seeking the views of fifers. St Andrews should be commended for their organised and tenacious campaign. But my constituency also organised, stowed out public meetings, numerous constituent complaints, all just five years after my predecessor and the former Labour MP organised to fight against the same proposal. It should also be noted that the partnership did not conduct a transport appraisal, which means my constituents now have to pay for taxis to access out of hours if they don't have a car. And if they can't afford it, they need to ask. Dignity is at the heart of the government's new social security system. Where is the dignity in being forced to pay, plead poverty just to see your doctor? Today's motion is focused on St Andrews and as Stephen Gethins has argued, the best outcome there is that services are retained at St Andrews Community Hospital. The GPs have pledged their support for retaining out of our services there. But my constituents face very different problems than those in North East Fife. Nearly one in three children living in poverty. In Leavenmouth, we have some of the lowest car ownership levels in the country. Benefits cuts have stripped more than a million pounds from the communities I represent. If the IGB votes on the 20th of December to permanently close Glenrothes GP out of our services, make no mistake, it will be the poorest who suffer. Willie Rennie is right to bring this issue back to the Chamber today. The public consultation has been opaque from the outset. The EQIA is not worth the paper it is written on. Our constituents deserve better in the 70th year of our National Health Service. Presiding officer, the decision on closing GP out of our services in St Andrews and Glenrothes and Dunfermline is one the IGB will take in a week's time. And whilst this is ultimately a local decision, I would very much welcome the Cabinet Secretary's views today on how we now move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Liz Smith to be followed by Claire Baker. Ms Smith, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I happen to think that this Parliament is at its best when, despite our political differences, we are able to argue very forcibly when one particular issue uh, dominates our mailbags, and this is one such. I have to say, in the last debate in this chamber, uh, we had a very similar uh, passion, and I think it's only right that we progress with that, because this is an extremely important issue, not just for St Andrews and the motion that Willie Rennie has brought, but for the whole of the kingdom. Can I thank Willie uh, Rennie for bringing the motion to the Parliament, uh, but also I think he has been um, very passionate and assiduous in his advocacy for keeping the St Andrews GP out of hours facility open, and these benches are very fully supportive of that decision. But can I also pay tribute to the other members, to the SNP members, to Labour members, to the Green member, uh, for their contributions to this debate, and I know that the uh, Cabinet Secretary herself is taking a, a keen interest in this and like Willie Rennie I would urge that she is able uh, to at least put some pressure on uh, the Fife situation. It is not just about uh, the IGB decision uh, which is on the 20th of December but I think it is about the way in which we make decisions about our local health services and I think this is part of a, a bigger picture and I know I've debated with the Health Secretary um, about the structure of IGBs and perhaps how we can um, improve some of that and when it comes to the local delivery. It has to be about the safe and sustainable levels of staffing and it must be equitable, it must be fair uh, and that has to be right across the kingdom uh, of Fife and we have to pay heed to the advice that the clinicians are putting to us and I know that it's a difficult balance when you come to um, what has been uh, termed an, an unsafe and uh, I think unsustainable situation by um, Michael Kellett who made that point that he thought there could be improvements ab about the delivery but the GPs in many instances particularly in St Andrews are saying something completely different and certainly at the public meeting I attended that Willie Rennie had organised in the first instance uh, that was a very very strong message and I think it's partly because of that very strong message that the campaign has had such uh, a, a considerable uptake in the 
uh, St Andrew's community. So I think there are a number of factors and I too have heard that comment that it, because it's St Andrew's people are relatively wealthy and they can cope with this. Um, not only is that actually quite offensive, it's not true because the demographic in St Andrews is a particularly uh, difficult one because it has a high demographic of elderly people, some of whom are not particularly well off, uh, and it obviously has a very high student population. So the demands on that particular thing are very different uh, from the ones that are in different parts of Fife. So I think w while we're being told that you know, there's, there's one part of the, um, the kingdom that is directing operations on this, I don't accept that. I think this is part of a much bigger picture, and I think what is happening in St Andrews is something uh, that we uh, need to see in the holistic uh, right, because the out-of-hours care is incredibly important for a whole host of patients. Um, and the town that has you know, a large population of students and retirees has a particular uh, demographic that I think, as I say, we, we need to be very careful about how we uh, respond to that. And it, we all know that it's critical that in any health emergency, the patient receives uh, treatment within that golden hour, I think the health professionals call it. So, you know, the travel across to Kirkcaldy or to Glenrothes or to Dundee, you know, that, that is a difficult option um, should the uh, decision be to close it down. And of course, thirdly, the residents of North East Fife were uh, very barely represented in the 2007 options appraisal workshops uh, when various discussions were taking place. So I agree with Willie Rennie. I think some of the professionals um, have been listening, but I'm not sure that the process, and as Jenny Gilruth has rightly set out in terms of the actual language of the consultation and, and the direction with which that has uh, taken has not been particularly uh, helpful to the engagement of the public. And I think as I see the, the argument at the moment, I think people are almost coming from it at different angles and that's not helpful to finding a, a resolution. And I'm very conscious that the Health Secretary is uh, very aware of that and is being as helpful as possible. So can I just uh, reiterate my thanks to uh, Willie Rennie, but also to all the other members who I think have been extremely um, honest and straightforward about this. And again, I, I think it brings together this Parliament on what is clearly a very critical issue for all of us who are either the elected member for the constituency or for those of us who are list members. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Claire Baker to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Ms Baker, please. Uh, thank you, President Officer. And I'd like to thank Willie Rennie for bringing forward this debate to Parliament and also thank him for the fair analysis he has given of the situation we are facing. It's not that long ago that many of us were in the chamber to talk about the wider closure of the out of our services across Fife and the debate that was brought forward by Jenny Gilruth. Um, St Andrews is one of three alongside Glenrothes and Dunfermline that find themselves facing an extremely uncertain future. I appreciate the particulars there are of the situation in St Andrews due to the reasons outlined by Willie Rennie in his opening speech and I welcome the opportunity for us to highlight them today. Um, MSPs were informed of the closure of the three out of our sites in April and next week the IGB will make the decision on their future. The decision to move to contingency measures um, were due to nursing and staffing difficulties and medical staffing difficulties leading to concerns over clinical safety. So as we are on the brink of the decision it's important to emphasise the consequences of any decision. So the decision to close the three centres was only supposed to be temporary, a contingency measure that would last for three months. Yet eight months down the line, there is little confidence that we will see a return to the services we once had. It could be considered that a contingency measure was supposed to be temporary until services were resumed and that all three out of our services could continue. However, disappointingly, the GP situation in Fife has continued rather than improved. I appreciate that the Scottish Government will highlight the new GP contract and the work of the universities in St Andrews and Dundee through the Scott Gem programme, and, and these are all welcome, but there are no guarantees that this will solve the problems of out of hours provision. Um, certain areas of Fife are struggling to recruit GPs for during the day, never mind at night. And in other areas, we are seeing more GPs go from full-time to part-time provision. Currently, a quarter of all practices in Fife are full, with all surgeries in Kirkcaldy, all surgeries in Loch Gelly, and four out of five surgeries in Dunfermline registering a full practice list. We also know that at least seven GP practices are experiencing a long-term recruitment difficulties, and two are considered to be in high-risk situation. This all makes the possibility of recruiting sufficient GP, GPs to out-of-hour service work even more challenging. 
While statistics released this week by ISD Scotland have shown there is a small rise in the number of GPs in Fife from this time last year, there are still fewer GPs from a decade ago. And at the same time, the number of people registering with a practice in Fife is increasing. So while Fife having fewer GPs treating more patients, there is bound to be an impact on services. Struggle, uh, patients struggling to book appointments at their local surgeries may start heading to A&E, all, um, all of which out of our GP services are meant to avoid. Others may decide to ignore the symptoms, powering through until they need further, more urgent care. This has the potential to put significant pressure on the Victoria Hospital in Kirkcaldy, currently the only facility in Fife with an out and hours service. And as Willie Rennie has highlighted, Dundee's King Cross um, serve out of hours is often at full capacity. We need to look at how to alleviate these pressures, not exacerbate them. That's why the decision to close St Andrews is all the more perplexing. I've attended public meetings in the area, including those organised by Willard Enney, and I've spoken to local residents and the student representatives at the university. I know how valuable the out of hours service is and how the alternatives are simply unacceptable and unrealistic. The travel times for St Andrews are too long, the rurality of North East Fife is challenging and the demographics of the population demands local health care. St Andrews Hospital um, was a out busy out of hours service and we are being told that there's a commitment from local GPs to run an out of hours service in St Andrews in the interest of their patients. NHS Fife make the case that it needs to deliver for all of Fife and can't accept a solution that would only serve St Andrews. I understand their responsibility is to do that and they must provide a service for the whole of Fife, but that must have flexibility and be able to be tailored. I want to see a solution that retains all three of our services, which recognises the importance of local delivery and does not risk exacerbating the health inequalities that Jenny Gilruth has highlighted. However, until this can be delivered, we have to be open to alternatives. NHS Fife should be flexible about St Andrews. It needs to recognise the needs of its elderly population, its rural nature, its distance from Kirkcaldy and the student population that includes a large number of overseas students. Reopening St Andrews Hospital does not take resources, GP resources, away from other areas in Fife. There is a strong case being put forward to keep St Andrews service running and NHS Fife must listen. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Mark Ruskell to be followed by Alexander Stewart. Mr Stewart will be the last speaker in the open debate. Mr Ruskell, please. Thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can also add my uh, thanks to Willie Rennie for bringing forward this motion for debate here today. Uh, and of course, much of what we discussed back in the October's Members' Business, brought by Jenny Gilruth, is obviously relevant to this debate today, but it's also good to have the opportunity to focus in particular on the situation in St Andrews and North East Fife. And I think you know, Liz Smith makes a very important point that I hope the Cabinet Secretary will reflect on, that this is genuine cross-party concern. We're bringing uh, thoughts and concerns and what we've heard from communities into this chamber here, um, and hopefully with solutions as well. Now, following the emergency closure of their services earlier this year, residents from St Andrews and East Nuke have endured journeys of up to an hour to access primary care overnight and at weekends. And with the capacity issues at King's Cross Hospital in Dundee, it's only compounded the issue. Now, I've received reports, and I'm sure many other members have, that there are patients who've had to take taxis, and yet they still haven't been re reimbursed for these long and expensive journeys. And I've also heard from students that they're relying on the goodwill of the university to pay for their travel costs to access these services. Now, the area has a, a unique demographic, as members have already reflected. We have a significant aging population living alongside a growing student population, and that brings its own specific healthcare challenges. Young and transient populations are more vulnerable to sudden contagion incidents, not just the uh, notorious freshers' flu, but serious and sometimes life-threatening illnesses like mumps and meningitis, which require a swift medical response. This unique demographic, however, also makes St Andrews an ideal place to trial new and enhanced ways to deliver out of hours primary care, using a mixed um, multidisciplinary team of, for example, advanced nurse practitioners, paramedics and pharmacists, as was recommended in the 2015 Ritchie Review. Now, I've been calling for an assessment of this option for some time now, uh, and again remind colleagues that this doesn't have to be an all or nothing scenario. There could be a model here that could retain these important services in the communities. And we can recognize, this, we can recognize the, the need for change, um, but at the same time, 
retain a level of primary care locally, joining up with a remote working GP and urgent care team based at the Victoria Hospital. Now it's clear that the consultation on these proposals has been wholly inadequate, especially since the formal consultation began with the assumption that services in St Andrews would close. And I recognize that the initial closure earlier this year was made in emergency circumstances, but I have heard from GPs in Fife who say that they were not even consulted before the closure was made and were not aware of the extent of the staff crisis for out-of-hours services. Now, I commend the work of St Andrews Community Council, who have sought to ensure local people are represented better in the decision-making process through a formal participation process. But I would urge the IJB to grant this request ahead of next week's decisive meeting. This issue, however, is linked with the wider GP crisis we face in Fife and across Scotland. The number of GPs in Fife has fallen since 2008, while the patient list has increased by nearly 11,000. 18 surgeries have stopped accepting new patients, while seven are struggling to recruit the GPs they need to deliver a basic primary care service. When local doctors are under such immense pressure during normal surgery, it is entirely understandable that the out-of-hours service has reached crisis point. I would be grateful to hear from the Cabinet Secretary in a closing speech about what is being done to address this overall GP crisis and how the Scottish Government are planning to deliver more GPs for Fife. So I look forward to hearing the outcome of next Thursday's IJB meeting and I hope the Board fulfills its duty to consider all options to properly consult with the community and to ensure they're providing the best possible care in the communities using the full range of medical practitioners that are at their disposal. Thank you, Mr. Ruskell. I call Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I welcome the opportunity to take part in this debate this afternoon and congratulate Willie Rennie for bringing it to the Chamber. Here we all are again, Deputy Presiding Officer, having to comment, condemn and debate yet another ill-thought-through proposal by Five Health and Social Care Partnership this afternoon, uh, which talks about the GP of our facilities in St Andrews. We've already heard uh, that the primary care emergency services at hospitals in Glenrothes, Dunfermline and St Andrews have all uh, faced uh, difficulties uh, in the last few months since uh, they had shortages back in April. And this area has a large number of students uh, who depend on these facilities and also an ageing population. Mm -hmm. And that, that population deserves more and deserves better facilities than they have at present. I would also like to comment on the effects uh, that took place. And I put forward a, a motion myself back in April uh, discussing and condemning uh, Fife Health and Social Care Partnership for what they were doing. And it was widely criticised across the community that the consultation process was completely and utterly uh, unacceptable. Uh, and that is rightly so. We've already heard that 6,000 people have signed a petition and more than 2,000 have submitted objection postcards. And it would sincerely hope that the IGB take notice of that, Deputy Presiding Officer. It would appear that they do not. We've all attended meetings uh, across the region and we've all communicated with them, but they seem to be quite stuck in their ways about what they want to achieve. Uh, and as some already have said, we seem to be moving towards the goal of achieving what they have on paper, not for what the community needs and deserves. Mm -hmm. This whole idea was supposed to be... Uh, looked upon as a contingency uh, to try and sort out situations and deal with problems in the region. And that hasn't happened. It, it, it seems to just be an exercise that we've all gone through. And the community feel very let down by that process. We've all heard that, you know, King's Cross in, in Dundee is out of our facility is often at capacity. Yeah. Uh, and that, that means that there are difficulties in ensuring that people from North Fife can actually be looked after and supported, or otherwise they have to go to Kirkcaldy. And we've already heard about the long distances and the difficulties that that caused. And it was only last week the GPs in the area did talk about what they could do to provide and what they might be able to support. Uh, and that should be taken on board. But once again, the IGB seem to be very blinkered at their attitude towards this consultation. I very much hope that the body will hear the views of local people that have been highlighted and look towards instating these vital services. I share the deep disappointment that health uh, Fife's Health and Social Care Partnership uh, seem to have a lack of respect for the community that they're supposed to be representing. 
We already know uh, that in the previous Secretary for uh, Health, she kicked things into the long grass. That was the way things were managed. I hope that the new uh, Cabinet Secretary will look upon this and see it as an urgent opportunity, because as you've already heard, Cabinet Secretary, across this chamber, members who are constituency or list members really understand this problem, and I think that you are beginning to understand it too. We have a massive problem and a major concern. So, you know, we've already heard uh, that there is and there's an acknowledgement that Fife are facing a recruitment and retention issues. So what do we have to do? We need to do more. Surely. Alec Rowley. Stuart, forgive me. We, we're aware and Claire Baker's highlighted the shortage of GPs in Fife, which is critical. And, and I think, you know, the Cabinet Secretary needs to look at that. But does he also understand that the Fife and Health partnership has continued to overspend its budget and I'm told is possibly running with an overspend of around eight million at the current time. And does does he think that actually there is a financial issue here that needs to be addressed as well? Alexander Stewart. I would acknowledge that there are priority issues with the IGB and they uh, need to take on board uh, what, what they have and what they're doing in the communities they represent. So I do, I do agree with Mr. Willey very much on that. As we already heard, you know, St Andrews is a growing location uh, and the other areas across the region, Glenroth is done firm, and they all require the support mechanisms to be put in place to ensure that the public are being looked after. This situation should be continued and concerned and, and the individuals across the region have that opportunity to ensure that this takes place. We must do all we can to continue uh, because we're putting patients' lives at risk Deputy Presiding Officer, and the Government and the Health Partnership have a duty of care and responsibility to protect the, these individuals in this region. They must act upon it and act upon it now. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call on Jean Freeman to close for the Government. Cabinet Secretary, please. <clears throat> thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And uh, like colleagues, can I also thank uh, Willie Rennie for bringing this matter uh, to the Chamber and to all of those who've contributed so far. Can I also uh, make a point of thanking Mr. Rennie too for his recognition of the professionalism of the health and social care uh, officials and the way in which they've uh, done this and also his recognition uh, that what uh, may need to be uh, delivered uh, be to meet the needs of uh, citizens in uh, Fife, not just the North East, but across Fife, uh, is not necessarily what has been in place up until now. Uh, I think that is a very welcome recognition that as we move uh, the delivery of our health and social care services forward, we need to recognise that what has I been is perhaps no longer uh, the right service uh, to offer people. But access to urgent primary medical services outside normal GP surgery opening hours is a fundamental part of unscheduled care in Scotland. Uh, around 4,500 patients are seen every month by the Fife out of our service, with around 20 seen between midnight and 8 a.m. every single week. Now, the reason why we've got a difficulty in terms of GP sh shortages in out of our services does in part come from the 2004 contract that GPs signed, which allowed GPs to opt out of working in the out of our setting. And so many of our GPs uh, who, as they uh, approach retirement, uh, are using uh, that to opt out of out-of-hours. Many of them retired, and new entrants to general practice have in the main chosen not to work out-of-hours. One of the things that we have talked about in this chamber before, or have touched on, is the new P GP contract. And the new GP contract reflects uh, one important element, and there are many in Sir Lewis Ritchie's uh, review of out of our uh, services and out of our care, and that is that out of our services require GP, uh, GP involvement. And the new GP contract, aside from introducing uh, that important multidisciplinary team and so on, uh, also uh, brings GPs into general practice on the basis of a recognition that they are required to contribute to out of our services. Uh, in Fife, uh, the Health and Social Care Partnership has uh, taken a number of steps to improve sustainability and resilience. It has introduced new pay scales for GPs to encourage the uptake of shifts 
uh, as the norm. That has steadied the service uh, to some degree. It has moved ahead with the advanced nurse practitioner training programme, training band, feed, uh, band five nurses up to band seven uh, advanced nurse practitioners. Uh, using the out of hours funding, they've recruited a further uh, three uh, advanced nurse practitioners to work alongside GPs and they also have uh, a paediatric advanced nurse practitioner. They're also working uh, to look at the prospect of a salaried GP service uh, introduced as part of the overall GP provision. Um, Tayside, who currently operate a 65-35 salaried to sessional GP ratio, uh, have managed to introduce that successfully, uh, and Fife are working with Tayside to see uh, what lessons they might have uh, to uh, teach them that they could uh, use. And there is also uh, a, new, uh, GP, a new GP clinical lead uh, that they've taken on, and they are looking at introducing a GP on-call uh, service. That would be a GP at home uh, in order to offer clinical advice on call. Now, I understand, and I, I absolutely do understand, the concerns that members have expressed and the concerns of people in Fife about the current situation. I do not believe that the uh, consultation um, was undertaken in the manner in which it was in a deliberate sense in order to uh, obfuscate and uh, make it difficult for people to be involved. But I do understand why that is the perception. Um, out of our services, intermediate care, how we configure primary care, how we deal with unscheduled care are not unrelated matters. And it makes sense to look at them in the whole, in the round. But the manner in which it was undertaken coming on the back of having to reduce out of our services for clinically safe, safety reasons, uh, in, almost inevitably, in my view, with hindsight, produced some of the serious perceptions that people have. And I do think that the uh, chief officer in Fife uh, and others recognise that difficulty. And I also think that they recognise that uh, whilst they undertook a number of meetings, um, Effective consultation and engagement is not just about the number of meetings you have, it's about how easily you make it for people to participate. I'll take you in a second. Before I, I go any further though, I have to say I'm not singling out Fife here, right? The, this is a, uh, an issue across our whole health service and our health and social care service. And I'm not being unfairly critical of people because I think folks do it with the best of intentions but we need to be uh, smarter in understanding how it feels to be asked to participate in order to have that engagement as uh, genuinely productive as it possibly can be. And I am looking at that uh, overall across the whole service. Yes. Liz Smith. Uh, thank you to the Cabinet Secretary. And I think it was very perceptive comments you've just uh, made. And uh, as you're quite right to say that this is across the country, not just in Fife. Would, would the Cabinet Secretary acknowledge that in terms of some of the language that uh, Jenny Gill Ruth uh, raised when she was uh, making her contribution, um, made it all that more difficult for people who were in mem as members of the public to understand what was going on? And that's maybe something that could be looked at in the future when there are discussions about changes that have to be made. Cabinet Secretary. <coughs> I think that's absolutely correct. I mean, the, the, um, it, it is a widespread issue. It's been with us for a while. Um, and it is about, it's about language. It's about how we run consultation events. It's about how we involve in a way that is genuinely meaningful local people to, to have a say and that we're straight with them. That actually having a say doesn't necessarily mean that we'll decide what to do what you want us to do but that we will come back and explain why not. Uh, I think we've got examples of doing it very well uh, and examples of doing it not very well. There are serious issues that Ms. Gil Ruth has raised about uh, when the equality impact assessment was done and, and so on and so forth. Um, so, so I am taking this issue very seriously. I'm sure Mr. Stewart has noticed that at least two of the health team are um, uh, quite short, shall I say. So long grass is not particularly attractive to me because I disappear inside long grass and I'm not a fan of it. But I do think that 
Um, we need to, so we need to try and move ahead here, right? The, the um, Health and Social Care Partnership uh, undertook, in terms of, of the steps you have to take, notwithstanding the important point about the quality impact assessment and the transport uh, impact assessment, but, un but they undertook uh, this process in a manner that, that complies with what is required. Um, they, they did the option appraisal uh, involving uh, members of the public and so on. They produced a consultation document. They ran a number of meetings. That in itself, so we shouldn't be overly critical about the approach they took, whilst we might have uh, positive suggestions to make to them and others about the language that's used and some of the critical elements that need to be put in place. What we now have is, of course, a request, quite rightly and entirely uh, within their rights, uh, from uh, St Andrews, and I also believe now from Glen Rothes, under the Empowerment Act, uh, to uh, have uh, recognition of and participation. That request is not to the IJB, it is to, quite rightly, to NHS Fife. And NHS Fife need to look at that and consider it. They've already responded, they've asked for additional information. Um, and in my mind, what all of that means is that the uh, IJB will not be in a position next week to make a decision uh, because that request has to be dealt with and heard and determined by NHS Fife in a proper and appropriate manner but without taking too long to do it. Um, at the same time, it's important that the discussions that are continuing, that have begun, I think there have been three so far, with the GPs in St Andrews, that those discussions continue. The initial, the initial proposition from those GPs, as I understand it, was uh, not accepted on the basis of clinical advice. So we've got clinicians disagreeing with clinicians. It's not unusual, it does happen. Um, and they need to work that through uh, because I think both parties genuinely want to find a resolution that is appropriate for North East Fife. And I take your point uh, about uh, how, um, uh, how in practice accessible it actually is to think about Tayside and, and the uh, service over there. I also welcome the fact that St Andrews University has acted to produce additional uh, health uh, facilities for students, but those do not cover out of hours, of course. So there are a number of areas that are being moved on. Some of the uh, remedial actions I outlined, uh, those continuing discussions uh, with GPs in North East Fife, and now the requirement to take appropriately and seriously the two requests that have been received under the Empowerment, the Community Empowerment Act. Yes, Mr. Wren. Willie Rennie, and just before um, I, I take you, Mr. Rennie, it's just that we are running out of time, so it has to be like an exchange of a minute. Mr. Rennie. Um, yeah, I, I, I welcome the fact that she's indicated that the partnership won't be in a position to make a decision next week and that further discussions can take place. I think that would be a great opportunity because there is a willingness to try and find a solution here that works. So if that is the case, I think that would be very welcome news in East Fife and and I hope the partnership are listening to the Minister's advice. Cabinet <clears throat> Secretary. So I, I've only recently, I've only been informed um, very recently about that request. Uh, I've, I've read the letter that's been received. I understand as of this morning that Glen Rothes, I've been informed that Glen Rothes have also made a similar request. I think it's Glen Rothes Residence uh, Forum. Um, so my understanding and my reading of the letter that has gone back from Fife to St Andrews uh, is that uh, an exchange of information needs to take place. Fife need to consider matters. They need to look at what Glen Rothes are saying to them too. That, that all indicates to me that it is actually not possible to make a decision in a week's time. So I will discuss further with the Chief Officer of uh, the Health and Social Care Partnership in Fife uh, what needs to be done and what the times might be. But can I... Finally, do say two things, presiding officer, if I may. Can I just remind members that in terms of people who have to travel for what is the existing provision, that the out of hours service will offer a home visit if travel is not possible, and we should make sure that uh, residents understand that. And can I finally assure uh, members in the chamber who've taken part in the debate and others that I will continue to keep a very close eye on this in order to make sure that we reach a resolution that within the available resource and the challenges that are to be met, uh, genuinely meets 
the, the needs of residents in North East Fife for a pro and Fife as a whole for an adequate uh, out of hours services to, uh, to meet their needs. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes the debate and I suspend this meeting until 2pm.